2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. I shall read in your hearing. And the verses read, Therefore sin, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. Again, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And I want to talk about the subject, we preach Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And I want to emphasize to you that it's all about Jesus. Yeah, all about it. Christianity is all about Jesus Christ. And let me just say to you, if you came to hear or to see any other person, you came to the wrong place. Yeah, yeah. But we preach Jesus. And it's all about Jesus. Christianity is based on Christ our Savior. And it's about Christ. Somebody said it's not about me. It's not about the building. Or the people in the building. It's not about the choir. It's not about the budget. Neither special ministries per se. But it's all about Jesus. How he died for our sins. How he was buried. And how he rose again on the third day. It's all about Jesus. It's about how God sent Jesus, his son, into this world to be the savior of the world. And we want to look at some attitudes about the services that the believer should render how they should render it as we think about Jesus. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 Paul had some interesting words to say and he said let the words of word of Christ dwell in you richly and all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns spiritual songs and singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. I read all, all of that because the latter word says to the Lord. All right. And again, even all your singing and worshiping and praising, yeah, yeah. it should be about Jesus. Yeah. And it should be rendered unto the Lord. Amen. He also says, and whatsoever you do in word, our deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And in the middle of that verse, he says, do it all in the name of the Lord. So it's all about Jesus when you really read and pray and study the word of God. And again, I want you to know that Paul told the Corinthian church, In 1 Corinthians 10 and 31, he says, Whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. It's all all. about Jesus. And that's why we preach about Jesus. And keep in mind, if God does not get glory for what we do, really we ought not to do it. And that's why he says, whether therefore you eat or drink, whatever you do, 
do all to the glory of God. And really, we preach Jesus. But preaching Jesus means that Satan does not want you to preach him. He, won't, he doesn't mind whatever you talk about, even if you talk about yourself. But he doesn't want you to talk about Jesus. And he actually seeks to defeat saints. And he seeks to destroy the testimony. And that's why we ought to keep preaching Jesus. You know, the devil, he is the one who produces pride in us. And then when we fail, it brings about doubt. And we become fearful. And it's always because we are fearing failure. But remember, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. But the devil is out there to mess up your mind. And we need to know that God didn't give us a messed up mind. But he gave us a sound mind. And maybe we need to change our thought pattern. The devil make you think unrighteous thoughts. But the Bible let us know that our, our thoughts can be elevated. And I told you God has not given us the spirit of fear. But I want you to know you ought to fill your mind with righteous thoughts. And in the book of Philippians, Paul says, Whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, even whatsoever things of a good report, if there be any virtue and any praise, think on these things. And if you keep reading Philippians, I believe down in that 13th verse, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And I want you to know that it's all about Jesus. Matter of fact, Jesus said of himself, without me, you can do nothing. But Paul says, I understand that. But I can do all things through you. And again, it's all about Jesus. We gather to worship in his name. We preach not for a show, not for fame, neither does we pre- uh, do we preach for fortune. But I want you to know it's not for the favor of the, or the praises of men, but we preach Jesus. And it's not for men to know our name, and it's not making a name for ourselves. It's his name. His name has been highly exalted. He has been given a name above every name. And that's why we preach Jesus. And we preach Christ Jesus the Lord. And you might want to put an emphasis on the Lord. Because he's the sovereign. But he is the one who became servant. And he continued to offer himself as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. But he is also the Savior of the world. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I'm talking about Jesus, the one we preach. We preach Christ Jesus crucified, buried, Resurrected, ascended, working miracles, and saving souls. But he's returning back to this earth again. And it's all about Jesus. And as we come up to our text, I want you to know in our text, Paul, who often had to vindicate his apostleship as well as his ministry. In this text, he explains the clearness and the plainness of the gospel in contrast 
to the law. I want you to notice with me because we're talking about it's all about Jesus. Yeah. I'm telling you that Christianity is about Jesus. But I want you to notice that Paul explains the character of the Christian ministry. All right. And first of all, he wanted to establish in our minds that we do have a ministry. That's right. We have a ministry. And then we have a message. Yeah. And also we have a mission. Right. Let me say that again. Say on, we do have a ministry. Right. And that's why we don't need to sit down and do nothing. Yeah. And say there is nothing for me to do. Right. But I want to say also that we have a message. We have a word that we need to share. And we have a mission. To get the gospel to the whole world. And again we do preach Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And Paul said therefore sin. We have this ministry. And all things are of God. Who has reconciled us. To himself by Jesus Christ. And has given to us the ministry. Of reconciliation. Yeah. I want you to notice what kind of ministry it is. It's a ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. Of souls that were alienated from God. Right. Separated from God. On their way to a devil's hell. And we have a ministry to get the gospel to them. Before it's everlasting too late. Yeah. We need to tell them they are not profiting. When they are sold. Is still lost. Because what does it profit a man. Even if he should gain the whole world. And lose his soul. Or what shall a man give. In exchange for his soul. And to be reconciled. Is to be made friends again. You know we are enemies. If you don't know Christ. You are enemies of God. But when Christ died. He reached up to heaven and reached down to mankind and caught our hands and joined our hands with Jesus and said, you're friends now. But I want you to know, Jesus joined our hands to the Father. But I want you to know that we have a ministry. Right. And it's t telling the world about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And we need to tell them that He's a merciful God. Yeah. And even we're saved by his mercy. Yeah. And we tell them as we have received mercy. Uh -huh. We tell them and we faint not. Yeah. And I want you to know when you think about mercy. Wow. It's God holding back judgment. And punishment. That we so rightly deserve. Right. But I want you to know that since we have received mercy. Then we don't faint. Yes, sir. We don't give up. Yes, I want you to know we don't lose courage. Yes, we don't quit. Yes. And we don't give in. I said we don't give up, but we don't give in. Yes, and we don't turn around. And really the Spirit, I believe, said to me that he wanted me to encourage somebody to keep on in Jesus' name. And really, when he spoke to me, I didn't know he was really telling me that. To keep on in Jesus' name. Because the devil would like to turn you around. He would like to say to you that your time is up. But don't give up. And don't give in. But keep on. In Jesus' name. Again, it's not about us. But it's all about Jesus. And Paul, let it be known to fulfill the ministry we have. We must refuse some things. And we must deny ourselves. Let me say that again. All of us need to know. If we're to fulfill this ministry. We must refuse some things. And we must deny ourselves. 
we have to be like Moses and say no to sin and yes to the Savior. But Paul says, but how we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. When he talk about renouncing dishonest things, he is saying you need to cast off certain things. You need to refuse certain things. You have to disown certain things and disclaim certain things. But I want you to know you do it by not walking in craftness. Actually, when you walk in craftness, it's trickery in cunning trickery as well as in deceit. But we are not to be walking in craftness nor handling the word of God deceitfully. We have to be careful that we rightly divide the word of truth. We're not to be twisting the meaning of the scripture to fit our own need. But I want you to know that we need to know that it's all about Jesus. And you need to get to know him as he is. And really, when he talks about not handling the word of God deceitfully, he is saying, don't be adulterating the word of God. But we, again, ought to rightly divide the word of truth. We do it by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. I want you to know when we preach the word, we don't have to persuade you to like us. The one we are preaching about is Jesus. It's not what you think about me. Because I can't save you, nor can I condemn you. But it's all about Jesus. So he says, but by manifestation of the truth, Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And I want you to notice that Paul boldly and openly made the gospel known. Let me say that again. Paul boldly and openly made the gospel known. And he says in verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, is here to them that are lost. And I want you to know, I want to be like Paul. I want to make certain that I don't fail to make the gospel known. And Paul knew that Satan is at work trying to keep the sinner from believing the gospel. I don't know if you ever noticed in church, but when singing is going on, You find everybody try to get in. But when the preaching starts, you find everybody trying to get out. But I want you to know they're looking for the appeasing and satisfying of the flesh. And they're forgetting their soul's need. But I want you to know the devil does not care about our singing. He doesn't care how you sing and how you shout. But he doesn't want you to preach the gospel. I want you to know that you can't call on him whom you have not believed. And you cannot believe on him whom you've not heard. And you cannot hear without a preacher. And a preacher cannot really preach lest he be sent. And I want you to see that Satan knows that it's all about preaching Jesus. And the Bible says that the lost are blind by Satan. Let me say that again. The Bible teaches us that the lost are blinded by Satan. Matter of fact, Paul says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the mind of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, 
who is the image of God, should shine shine unto them. Uh I want you to notice that the devil blinds the mind. He didn't say their eyes were blind, Uh but their minds were blind. Matter of fact, I'm surprised. Everybody's awake while I'm preaching. Because nothing puts you to sleep like preaching. Because the devil is always watching. He knows who needs the word. And that's the one he has somebody to talk to. To get their attention off what the preacher has to say. He knows that you need the word. And that's why he'll begin to text you when you need to know what thus says the Lord. He'll begin to tell you about something else. About the playoff with the basketball game. But he doesn't want you to hear about Jesus. But I want you to know if you came here for any other purpose than to hear about Jesus, you came with the wrong purpose in mind. If you came to see somebody else other than Jesus, you came to see the wrong person. But I want to tell you that if you came to hear any other message other than the preaching of the gospel, You came to hear the wrong thing. But Paul says, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Matter of fact, we ought to show more of him and less of ourselves. We ought to be like John the Baptist and saying, I must decrease that he might increase. We ought to tell the world more about Jesus. I told you I couldn't quit because if I quit, it would mean the devil has won a victory. If I turn around, it means the devil has already defeated me. But I want to tell you that I'm going to keep on trying to tell you more about Jesus. I want to tell you that Christ Jesus is the Lord. I'm talking about Christ Jesus. He is the Messiah and He is the Savior. I got to tell you more about Jesus. He's God incarnate. I got to tell you about Jesus. But let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm just a nobody Uh trying to tell everybody about that somebody who can save anybody. All you got to do is believe the report of what we tell you about Jesus. I'm just a servant, and I'm a servant for Jesus' sake. All I want to do is get your soul saved. It's all about Jesus who is the Savior, and I want to tell you more about Him. Uh Well, let me tell you, when we were in our sinful state, God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, way back in creation, He caused light to shine out of darkness, Uh but He has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus Christ. I want you to know Jesus is God. He is the creator. Uh In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that is made. But I want to tell you that he just said let there be light. And there was light. Well, he gives light to all that will walk in his path. But let me tell you that Jesus is the light of the world. 
And that's why he said, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And I used to hear the song saying, the Jesus is the light that will show up in me. If I walk right, if I talk right, he'll show up in me. Right. Well, I told you earlier that I can't give up because we have a ministry. But I want to tell you that we have a gospel with treasure in it. And well, Paul said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Right, right. And that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Right, right. What he is saying is that it's a treasure in earthen vessels. Right. And I want you to see that it's a treasure and superiority is something that to be desired. Right. It is something of great honor that the Lord would give you a treasure in this old frail human body. Right, right. But I want you to know that we don't want to take the credit for what God is doing. Right. And is that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Right. Some of us like to boast and brag on yeah. what I or we have done. Yeah. But I want to tell you that when you get to looking at it, we are nothing but dust. Yeah. And I want to tell you that he put it in this body of flesh. Yeah. I'm trying to close now, Come but on, I want to tell you that before I close, I just want to remind you that it's all about Jesus. Yeah. And that's why we preach Jesus. I want you to know the power is in Jesus. I want you to know that it's all in us by the Holy Spirit and in the word that we preach. And it's power in the name of Jesus. And it's power in the blood of Jesus. All of it is in the treasure that he given us but let me say it this way when I look at this treasure I want to tell you that we have power it's brought us here today and you are here today because the power of the Holy Ghost drew you but I want to tell you that Paul says I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, and I want you to know that it's power, but it also produces salvation, and nothing is more important than knowing that your soul is saved. But I want to tell you that when the gospel has really been applied to your life, it make you a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things all become new. I want to tell you, you have a new life in Christ and right, right. if you don't have it or let me tell you there is hope if you even for you today because Jesus told me to tell you that it's all about him he said I am the way the truth and the life and no man come unto the father but by me and we heard it in song that whatever you need is in the old church house but let me tell you that what you need is in Jesus if you got the Holy Spirit in your life you got love spread abroad in your heart and if you got the Holy Spirit you have peace and joy all in Jesus because you know him as Savior but I want to tell you that if you know Jesus he's the merciful high priest that he can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities and whatever you need is in Christ Jesus because if you need somebody to plead your case he's a mediator between you and God when the devil try to turn you around and make false accusation I want to tell you that he's our advocate standing 
by the father saying, George has died, or rather know that I've died for his sins, and he is trusting in what I have done. I want to tell you that he is a mediator, but I want to tell you that sometimes you just can't get into offices and you need somebody to speak for you, but I want to tell you that he is a great intercessor and... Well, Job said in his affliction that he needed somebody to talk for him and mediate for him. He just needed a doorman. And I want to tell you that Jesus is that doorman that can reach up to the Father and reach down to man. And he is our advocate, but I want to tell you that we need mercy sometime. And he's the propitiation for our sins. I want to tell you that mercy is what we need. And time like these and yet not only does he do these things for us but I want to go back again and tell you that he is the savior and not only is he the savior but he's a friend of mine you need to get to know my friend because he's a friend that's sticking closer than any brother he proved his friendship because he laid down his life for us and greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friend and when I'm in trouble I want to tell you he's my lawyer and I want to tell you that not only is that but when I'm sick he's my doctor I want to tell you he heals my body and I'm going to keep my mind focused on Jesus and I want to tell you I want to tell you to believe and know about the life and the death and the resurrection of my Lord and Savior and let me tell you that he was born of a virgin named Mary he lived a sinless life and died a substitutionary death and that's why we have hope because he didn't stay dead but three days later he rose again with all power of heaven and earth in his hand and he told me to tell you that it's a gospel for everyone and if he has the power and he can save the black he can save the brown he can save the yellow and he can save the red and he can save the white he can save the young and he can save the old and he can save the rich and he can save the poor and he can save you today if you want to be saved and I want to tell you that when he saved your soul a wonderful change is brought in your life and it's all about Jesus and he can do what money can't do for you. He can do what medicine cannot do for you. He can do for you what man cannot do. He can bless your life, but he's a shield of protection. And when we get in trouble, because Paul said trouble is sure to come, but we got a victory in Jesus. Because when we are in trouble, I want to tell you, and we are trouble on every side, but we yet not distressed when we're troubled. But when we are perplexed, I want to tell you, we are not in despair. When we look at it, that men will talk about us and scandalize our name and persecute us. But when we are persecuted, we are not forsaken. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. He said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. We get up sometime and somebody says that we fall down, but we get up. The reason why when we are cast down, we are not destroyed. He got to hit us with a harder blow than that. Because Jesus, my big brother, he's on my side. He's leading and guiding me. And I got to close now. But I want to tell you that we preach Jesus and him crucified. We tell it everywhere we go that the world needs Jesus as the Savior. And Jesus told me to tell you that I and if I be lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me. I want to tell you that somebody ought to help me lift Jesus. 
preachers? Will you help me live Jesus? People, will you help me live Jesus? If you live Jesus, you're lifting bread for the hungry. If you lift Jesus, you're lifting medicine for the sick. If you lift Jesus, you're lifting a friend for the friendly. Somebody ought to help me lift Jesus. He will be with you in your joy and in your sorrow. He'll walk by you. He'll talk to you. He'll tell you that you are his own. Hey! The joy we share as we tarry there, none have ever known. He's the sweetest thing that ever happened to me. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy because of Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I'm going where Jesus is. Yeah. Thomas said, Lord, we know not where thou goest, and how can we know the way? I heard him say, I, I, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no man come to the Father but by me. But Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. But I heard him say, when you see me, I have I been so long with you, and you don't know who I am. When you see me, you see the Father. Jesus is everything. He's all that I need. In him, it pleased the Father that all the Godhead should dwell bodily. He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He's the author and the finisher. I tell you, he's all in between. Whatever you need, somebody needs Jesus. You don't need a doctor. You need Jesus. You don't need money. You need Jesus. Hey, 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 you ought to walk down the aisle. Yeah. Say, for God I live and God I'll die. Yeah. If the Lord needs somebody, yeah. here am I. Here am I. Yeah. Why don't you come while the blood is running warm yeah. in your veins? Yeah. Come to Jesus. Yeah. I didn't want to hold you so long, but Jesus... His name is Sweet. Sweet, I know. The sweetest name is Jesus. Just help me call his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey. Thank you.